Are you watching this from a city right now? Statistics say you probably are, since 55% of the world's population lives in cities and urban areas. Like this pizza, cities are made up of multiple layers of different competing ingredients, and let's face it, they're messy. So are cities good for us, and how can they be made better? Are cities smart or stupid? Let's cook up some answers. Now, exactly what a city is depends on your definition, which differs around the world. In the UK, it's usually about having a cathedral in your town, whereas in Japan, you need at least 50,000 people to qualify for city status. Ancient Rome grew up around its own mythology, and its gleaming palaces and lavish temples were testament to its religious fervour and conquering success. While modern Tokyo is a blend of ancient tradition and ultimate high-tech, with massive modern skyscrapers towering over Shinto temples. OK, Nigel, set timer for 10 minutes. Every city is unique, but one thing all modern cities have in common is technology. Enter the smart city. Take Barcelona, for example. It has LED streetlights that are only activated when they detect movement. This leads to energy savings of more than 30%. These very same lampposts are also equipped with sensors that collect data on air quality, relaying information to city agencies and to the public. Smart power grids in many cities take real-time data from devices like smart energy meters to determine how much power is needed, keep the supply running and avoid blackouts. As clever as these initiatives are, we undermine them by doing stupid things, like leaving lights on in office buildings overnight when there's nobody there. Nigel, why's my light been left on? In Kansas City in Missouri, a data visualization app gives residents real-time information about parking spaces, traffic jams, and pedestrian hotspots. And yet, the bright lights of the city aren't always the shining beacon they might appear to be. Nigel, where are my slippers? Concentrating tens of thousands of people into just a few square kilometres can have some unexpected and unpleasant consequences. For a start, all those humans produce an awful lot of waste, and if it's not managed properly, it can lead to pollution of the air, ground and water, both inside and outside the city. And while drawing people from great distances will undoubtedly create diversity, it will inevitably create disparity in economic status. Not all those drawn to a city's opportunities will be able to afford the comparatively high prices of housing and amenities, leaving them in under-maintained suburbs and slums where quality of life is markedly lower and crime is higher. Plus, for an individual, the speed, cost and pressures of city life can have some seriously negative effects on mental health. Crowds, noise, crime, high-pressure jobs, uncertain economic security, a lack of green spaces, the expectation of perpetual connectedness can all lead to stress and anxiety that can cripple a city dweller both physically and psychologically. With modern cities, we're facing a vicious catch-22. We're irresistibly drawn to the higher quality of life that they promise, but the perils of city living actually decrease our quality of life. However, that might not be the case for much longer. All of these cities of the future have a common goal, to use technology to increase efficiency, provide information, and generally improve quality of life. In Singapore, smart systems monitor energy and water use, waste production, and the cleanliness of public spaces so that the place stays clean and tidy. All of these systems are controlled and coordinated by the Internet of Things, a vast network of interconnected inanimate objects that can collect data, from your fridge, to your streetlights, to even your paving slabs. According to some, the future of smart cities is golden with artificial intelligence and machine learning all helping to improve the potentially negative aspects of city life. Stressed about getting to work on time? Smart systems will detect the traffic and plot a route for you. OK, Nigel, what's the traffic like tomorrow? Worried about your impact on the environment? Smart tech will make sure that your grey water is never wasted and all of your rubbish is recycled. In this way, cameras, sensors and almost constant data collection can make city residents' lives easier, healthier and more sustainable. But these technologies are not without their flaws and opposition. The obvious worry is about the use of that data. With cameras monitoring your every move, when can you be sure of absolute privacy? How secure is our Internet of Things against hackers that would seek to use the digital infrastructure for their own ends? And far from promoting socio-economic equality, smart technology could risk deepening the existing rifts if it's not deployed in a careful way that allows all the members of a community to access it. We've still got a long way to go with creating the perfect utopian smart city for all. But I think it's fair to say that the smart tech that's been infiltrating city lives so far, we are taking steps in the right direction. I for one will welcome the day when a smart sensor detects my grumbling stomach and delivers a pizza to my door.